Hello everyone, today we are going to start working with Karamba as a structural analysis tool and uh, we are going to start with a simple beam structure. For a start, I'm going to draw a surface, a rectangular surface in my Rhino screen and uh, bring it into my grasshopper by setting one surface. Uh, I'm going to hide it inside my Rhino and just one important thing is that uh, our unit should be on meters because uh, we want to use Caramba, it's very important that the unit would be on meters otherwise it doesn't work correctly. So I have my surface, I want to transform it to a mesh so I'm going to use a surface uh, mesh surface component and uh, define two values for u and v for start let's work with um, a value of one for one of the directions and the other would be something like six uh, for working our uh, on our caramba model we need to define the lines as the beams so i'm going to extract the lines from my mesh which which would be with the uh, component mesh uh, edges and uh, by connecting the output of uh, these two values I will get my all my curves or beams so these are my curves I also need uh, some support points so I'm going to extract also uh, extract these points from my mesh so I'm going to use a naked vertices component and uh, extract these naked points which are in here and uh, define them as my support points the other thing that uh, we need uh, is to start going to the Karamba, component, Karamba plugin so which uh, when we go to the Karamba plugin it has different parts which we need to use in different steps the first thing to do is uh, using a model, assembled model and it gives us some hints about which uh, elements that we need to combine together to have an assembled model, assembled Karamba model. The first thing uh, I'm going to use uh, is an uh, element, I should define an element for it. So if I go to the model tab, I can have different parts, uh, it's aligned to beam or mesh to shell uh, now we want to work on a beam structure so i'm going to use a line to beam component and define my curves as the input for the uh, line to beam component i can leave this parts or i can define a name or id for it for now we will just uh, continue with their default and uh, this is uh, the output of these elements should be connected to the element input of the assemble model. Now if we connect the panel to the output of the model, we can see that it says we have a model with this length, how many nodes it has, uh, how many elements it has, and also it says that there are no supports, and that's because we have not defined a support for it yet. But we have defined our points in here and we want to um, transform them to the supports. If we go to the model tab again under the support Karamba 3D, we can find our supports and uh, we define these points as the position and uh, it has the conditions which defines how many degree of freedom our supports would have. The mm, first three parts uh, is the transition in x y and z if we click on them it will be locked in these transitions and the next three parts is the rotations which defines if our structure is uh, free to rotate or uh, there is restricted in rotation also so now my structure my supports are completely locked in their transitions and also in their rotations we connect the support to the support input as you see in here 
and uh, now we see that it's uh, changed the information of our model and it says that we have 14 supports next thing that we can do uh, is to define the material and also the cross-section we can define it in here or we can directly connect it to the cross-section input we go to the cross-section and the first part is a cross-section so if we uh, use this we can define some um, cross sections from the categories that it has inside it's a I section or box section or other types for now let's go with the box section and it also it has uh, some information about the height width and they're the default values but we can also change them later so for now let's work with the default values Let's connect the cross-section to the cross-section part. We also can define the material. So under the material section, we can find the material selection. And in here, it also has some default uh, materials. For example, we can define the material as a steel and one kind of the steel, which is, for example, S235. Uh, and we connect the material output to the material input of our assemble model the next thing is the load which we also can find in the load part and it also has some default uh, loads for example gravity point load uniform or other parts so for now let's go with gravity if i connect the load now we have a complete model uh, which has the load which has the supports the elements which is beam in here and also the cross section and material are defined the next thing we can do is uh, to use an analysis but before going to that let's take a look to another output of our assembled model which is the mass mass is the weight of the structure which is very important in a structural design and analysis so now we can see that this structure has a mass of around 13,000 kilograms which you can see that it's uh, the unit is in kilograms now if i change it to something like wood we can see that the weight is much uh, less than that of the steel so this is a lightweight structure compared to the steel so let's continue with wood now the next step is using an analysis which is a different analysis we have in here but now let's work with the first one here we can connect the output of our model to the analysis and here we can have uh, information of the displacement of our structure which is in centimeters so now it says that our displacement is nine centimeters if we change these uh, inputs for height for um, upper width and uh, for the width and thickness the inform the displacement would be different so let's take a look on how it will change these values for example if we increase the height to 15 then the displacement got uh, almost half we also can change the width so let's put it on 10 for both low, uh, lower and upper it again gets less and also the thickness let's change it to 0 0.6 and all these numbers are in centimeters so let's say it's okay now and we are satisfied with these results the next thing is using the model view which we can also find it in the results tab so if i connect the model it has uh, some information about the deformation of the structure which i can change it to see what a scale it shows how much it enlarges the um, output or it just shows what it is mm, and I also can change the scale of the supports it's not very visible in here 
the uh, scale of the loads mm, and the reactions for example the next part uh, is which is very important is the beam view because in here we have a beam structure beam view which also is in the results tab uh, we can connect the output of model to our model input of the beam view and uh, let's hide all the rest parts and go to this part uh, one thing that I'm seeing in here is that the scale of our surface is so big so we go back to our surface and uh, we scale it a little bit Okay, now it's more visible what the cross sections are. So our scale was really big and it couldn't show us the results. So I'm going to hide the surface again. Now let's go to the render settings to see what results it can have for us. Uh, we can see the cross section, which is a box in here. We can see the axial stresses, as you see. The, and we can also use a legend output to our uh, beam view output and it shows the uh, stresses the uh, blue uh, the blue color shows the compression and the red is the tension Again, maybe we can make the scale less to see more visible. Okay. Yeah, for example, in here, it's more clear how the stresses are distributed. We can also use the displacement. And this is uh, showing us that in places which uh, are very close to the supports, there is less uh, displacement uh, almost uh, zero and uh, where they are making different distance from these supports uh, we have more distances which are these parts that are in purple okay so now we have our definition for the uh, structural analysis we can change our surface to other surfaces to see how it will be different so now if I again see my uh, surface and now I want to uh, let's disable these parts and we want to see our surface and using points on I want to extract the points of my surface and make some modifications on it for example making this kind of anti-classic surface so if I uh, connect my surface again uh, and see my mesh it's the same mesh let's hide my surface again inside my Rhino and make this part um, enabled uh, you can see that now the structure is working differently also the displacement would be different uh, so again if we just check it with the previous part you see in here it was 0 0.22 but after the change it's a 0 0.24 so it's different mm, we can also uh, change uh, the surface completely so let's work with other kind of surfaces for example a, a cylindrical surface a semi-cylindrical surface Let's uh, make one. Okay. So, if 
I make this kind of surfaces and connect this as my input okay this that important thing in here is that um, in here this number of u is not enough so we should need to change it to something that makes the curvature more visible okay for example maybe this would be okay so now uh, we have a grid and it's not just a one direction beam okay if now I let's see if our uh, supports are correct or not for example in here I just want to have the supports in these two parts and for that what I can do is uh, to create two curves in here uh, and define these two parts as support so for making this I'm going to uh, define my naked points and uh, making an extraction between them so I'm going to create a pointing curves component yes this one because I have two curves I need to have a pointing, pointing curves component uh, and I want these points to be checked if they are inside these two curves or not okay so now it checks uh, and I'm going, I'm going to use the dispatch component for making a separation between my list based on being or not inside the curves so now these points are the points that are inside the curves and are my intended support points so I define these points as the supports and now let's see what's the result okay also let's hide all the parts and also hide them in Rhino okay now we can see that these parts have the most displacements and uh, and because they are far from the supports and the maximum displacement but is uh, it's reduced and the reason is that uh, we have more structural elements it's a grid rather than just being some beams and uh, the form also is different so these are points that um, changes the structural stability and um, in here we can also add to the strengths of our structure by adding to the supports so if I also use the points that we had in this list which are uh, the points in the uh, corners in the edges and define these points as the points that are also supports but uh, have the ability to rotate and add this also to our supports we can see that now the structure is becoming different these parts are becoming also more stable and also the uh, displacement also is different so this is the first part with an introduction to the beam and in the next parts we will go to other parts of the Karamba structural analysis thank you